Welcome to the USB-C charging cable video you didn't know you needed. Not all USB-C charging cables are created equal. The one that came with our iPhones, with the iPhone 15s, is a nice looking cable, nice braided cable, but is it the best option as far as quick charging our iPhones? That's what we're gonna learn in this video. And then in another video, we're gonna look at data transfer speeds. For those of you who wanna use one of these cables for transferring video files off of your device, there's definitely differences there as well. Well, for our testing, we're going to look at both an iPhone 15 Pro Max and also an iPad Pro 12.9 inch and see what kind of charging we can get out of it. Now, I've been kind of trying different configurations and just trying to see what I can get. Our source cable is going to be this Thunderbolt 4 cable that supports up to 240 watts of power transfer, and I've confirmed that by testing it. For our power supply, we have the Blue Eddy AC 180, and the reason that I'm using this as opposed to just plugging in to the wall using like a 100 watt power adapter, which this power adapter is from Speedgen, and it's 100 watts and it supports USB type. C. The reason that I'm using this is simply because I have it and I use it when I am away from home and I need an additional power source. The AC180 I did a review of, so I'll make sure to link to that below. This provides up to 1800 watts of output. It has USB-C, USB type A, and it has four AC ports on the side of it, as well as wireless charging on top of it. So it has a ton of features and I've got a video that you can check out uh, so that you can see how this thing performs. But we're gonna plug in the OWC cable into the 100 watt output uh, USB-C port here and we'll turn on DC voltage so that we have DC voltage and I also had AC voltage on, we'll power that one off. First thing we're gonna do is plug into this voltmeter that I have that's going to allow us to see how much current is actually traveling through the cable. And we will start out with this relatively long cable from Anchor. This is USB-C to USB-C. All of these cables I'm gonna to link to down below. What we're looking for here is a good pass-through current. Some of these cables are going to be limiting the amount of current that can get through. And that's something that we're gonna be paying attention to is how much current can actually get through when we plug in to our device. So let's go ahead and plug in to the iPhone 15 and see what kind of transfer we get as far as current goes. It's moving around quite a bit. Uh, we haven't seen it go up into one amp yet, but it has blipped and gotten, oh, there it goes. Now we are up in the one amp now that the screen is off. And so we are at 1.2 amps as far as our current. You can see the amount of milliamps that it's transferred and then the time in which we've been connected today down there. And so we're looking at around uh, 1.2 amps as far as this cable. So that's great. Our next cable, which is from Belkin. Belkin is a fairly common, well-known brand as far as cables and accessories for Mac and uh, iPhone. Now this is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. And so I know that there'd be good data transfer speeds out of this cable, but would it be a good cable for charging as well? Without disconnecting anything here, let's just go ahead and plug in one end of the cable and then the other end of the cable into the phone. There we go, we are connected and we are at 1.8 amps. It is jumping around a little bit, which tends to happen simply because we're not just drawing full power all the time, but we did see it get up to 1.8. Right now it is kind of working its way back up there 1.6, 1.5, so we know that it does have a pretty decent transfer capacity as far as power. 1.5, 1.6, looks like uh, that's about where we're going to be. So let's see what we get if we do the same things, plug into the iPad Pro and see what kind of performance we get there. So the iPad Pro is now connected and you can see we've got uh, 1.4, looks like a pretty solid 1.4. Obviously, the bottleneck with some of these cables is going to be how fast the devices will charge. Like, now some of these cables will be able to handle more power, like this cable being able to handle 240 watts. Like, you're not putting 240 watts into an iPhone or an iPad. And so, what we're looking for is, are these cables able to at least hit the max charging rate that these devices have because some of these cables might not be able to do that. And then in the next video, we'll be looking at transfer speeds because obviously some of these cables are nice and thin and very flexible. Wow, look at this one. We're at 2.5 
amps. And so this cable is even better. The Anchor cable, this is the Anchor Series 3, and we are at 2.5 amps. That is definitely gonna charge a device a lot faster than the previous cable that we looked at. Even though that's a Thunderbolt 3 cable and is gonna have good data transfer, it's not gonna charge a device quite as fast. So now we're plugged into the iPhone and we've gotta wait for charging to kind of kick in. So far that hasn't happened. Um, let me just unplug and plug the device back in. And so far we're getting nothing. That's kind of weird that it worked so well with the iPad and is not working with the iPhone. Let's set it aside and switch to another cable. Now, before we go too much further, let's find out what the iPhone 15 Pro Max cable, this is the USB-C cable that came with the iPhone. How is it going to do as far as performance? Let's plug that in and see what we get. All right, so with that plugged in, we are seeing maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Turn off the screen. I did see it blip all the way up to 1.4, I think it was, but we're not getting that. Oh, yep, there we go. We're getting up to 1.3 now. So we've got 1.3, that's not too bad. And I figured out what the issue was. I just simply had to unplug everything from the Blue Eddy really quick and everything started working again. So we're getting like 1.4, 1.4 amps as far as our current, which is not bad. I really want to see, can that anchor cable push as much current into the iPhone as it did the iPad? Because that would be simply amazing and make the anchor cable a, uh, a clear leader so far in what we have. So there we go. We've got it uh, going so far. We are not seeing anything too exciting, but I don't think the iPhone is ramped up quite yet. As far as it's charging, now we are up in the 1.2, not as good as the Apple USB-C. Obviously this cable is capable of more. We did see it bump up to 1.2. There could be differentiators here and, and it could come down to what the iPhone is deciding to draw. We should be able to see uh, peak transfers there as far as charging goes. Let's try the Apple braided cable on the iPad Pro and see what the iPad Pro is able to draw. All right, so look at that. I mean, the iPhone's cable is like 2.5, almost 2.6 amps of current going through to the iPad, which actually jumps between maybe 30. I saw 37 on the Blue Eddy there for a second. Now we're down to two. But what was nice is that we did see a good transfer as far as uh, our, our current using the Apple cable. But let's test a few more of these cables, like this uh, USB-C cable from Amazon Basics. It is very thick, very durable cable. 100 watts uh, is what it is advertised as. Maybe not necessarily a cable I would choose just because it is so thick that it's not a very flexible cable. And as we can see, we're able to get the max 35 watts uh, into our devices utilizing much thinner cables. And so I would probably opt to go with a cable that's a bit more flexible. This is like Cat6 cable. It is so big and bulky. Let's try it with the iPad Pro first and plug in and see what we are able to get. And my little meter seems to be giving me a little bit of trouble uh, with this particular cable. So let's just plug directly into the Blue Eddy and see what kind of transfer we're able to get. 35 watts maxed out, 35 watts is what the iPad will charge. So the iPhone starting out a little bit low, couple of watts and will likely jump up here as it is doing right now, kind of stopping around nine, but that tends to be what the iPhone does. It doesn't just go straight to 35 watts. It tends to hang out for a little bit and wait to get there. And right now it looks like it's maxing out at around nine watts of pull. And that could be where the battery is at and what the battery needs right now. Now this is rated at 100 watts, so I would assume that it could handle 100 watts. Doesn't necessarily mean that our device is going to draw 100 watts from it because our iPad and our iPhones are not capable of taking on that much wattage. So next we have a twin pack of USB-C cables from JS Aux, I think is how you would pronounce this. They also have an interesting little adapter that we're gonna take a look at because most of these cables can transfer data as well. And so if you're thinking about 
plugging in and charging, uh, how do you charge safe? If you're out somewhere using some other power source, how do you know that that power source is not maliciously connecting to your phone and trying to take data from your device or hack your device or something like that? That is definitely something to consider, something you might not have considered. Well, JS Aux has an interrupter that they've created, and that goes between your charging cable and your device. And so if you plug in your charging cable to this JS aux, or maybe you're being charged by some other charging cable that comes out of some sort of a, a device, this is going to disconnect any sort of data connection and only provide charging. So you can attach this to the end of any cable that is USB type C and then plug that into your device and it's going to assure that no data is being transferred. And so charging still works. Connected to this cable, let's see what kind of transfer we're getting. Uh, so far, we're only using a few watts, seven or so watts. Let's actually try plugging this entire setup into my meter and see if it's able to track what we're doing and uh, give us a, a better idea of power draw. So we're plugged in there and uh, you can see it's kind of ramping up a little bit here. 0.7, almost getting up to one. Let's turn the screen off on the phone and see if that jumps up a little bit more. This is going through not only the JS Aux cable, but also the data interrupter as well. What we're seeing is um, not super, oh, there we go. We're jumping up above one now. So perhaps it could get there, maybe up to one and a half. I'm not thinking that this would go up into 2.5 like we saw when connected to the iPad. We're definitely up at 1.42. We've seen 1.42 amps with some of the other cables, while some of the other cables were able to jump up into 2.4, one whole additional amp, which that's gonna charge a lot faster if you can get one additional amp out of that. Now let's see if we remove the data interrupter, if that's going to make any difference in our charging performance utilizing the same cable that we have plugged in. The issue that I seem to be having is that our USB devices, our phone and our tablet, want to provide charging to a device that I'm actually plugging in. And so it's creating a little bit of confusion here for our Bluetti, our other devices, because it's pushing power in the opposite direction. There we go. So you can see with this cable, we're up at like 2.5, we're up there. And so the, the data interrupter is definitely affecting our charging rate. But if you are in a place where you, you're connecting to some sort of charging device and you're just not sure, maybe it's one of those charging dock uh, things in the airport or whatnot, and you're just not 100% sure that that is a safe unit to be plugging into, you can use something like this to make sure that there's no data going between your device and the charging unit that you're plugging into. We know that these cables are fast. These JS Aux cables are fast, and this comes in a two pack. So far, I would say my favorite cable has been this anchor cable just because it's flexible and I feel like it's more durable than the cable that comes with the iPhone. Not sure exactly, Namasco maybe is the brand name. This was uh, a cable that had good reviews on Amazon. It is a bit thicker, but has that braided cable look as well. And so very durable looking cable. So far, I'm liking what I see. I feel like this is a cable that would last, especially in situations where my cable might be getting used by others. Like I know my family can be kind of challenging, can be kind of hard on cables. And so I would go with a cable like this because I know it would last a long time. Let's plug into the iPhone and see what we get out of this cable. And we are at 0 0.5, 0 0.8, somewhere in between there, jumping around. Now jumping up to 1.5, very good. And so 1.5 is kind of what we've been seeing out of the iPhone. I feel like that is around the maximum of what we can expect to get out of the iPhone. As far as charging goes, we haven't seen anything greater than that. And so 1.4, 1.5, that's pretty good out of this cable. Let's plug it into the iPad and see what we get out of the iPad. All right, so the iPad is uh, connecting and starting to charge. We've got an instant 1.4, we're kind of pinned out there. And so we have seen some cables that couldn't go up into the two amps, and that might be this cable. It's drawing as fast as it can, pinned out at 1.4, 1.42, but it's not jumping up into the two amps. And you can see also what it's doing is it's actually drawing close to 15 volts, and that's what the iPad is able to do. It's able to draw more voltage than the iPhone can as well. Obviously it has bigger battery, and uh, it is a bigger device altogether. And so you can see we're drawing 15 volts, 
at 1.4 amps out of that device. So nice cable, not the fastest one that we've seen so far, but definitely as far as braided cables go, I would say this one provides a nice, it's nice and flexible while being thick and durable. The JS Aux cable, a little bit thinner, Still kind of flimsy, but this cable I'd want to stretch out for a while and just see how uh, how well it holds up. So let's recap some of the cables that we've taken a look at so far. We have the cable that came with the iPhone, and that cable does a pretty good job. When plugged into the iPhone 15 Pro Max, we get a good 5 volts at 1.3, 1.4 amps, and that is about as good as we can get. Sometimes this cable tends to be a little bit lower, not all the way up to 1.4, which we've seen with some of the other cables. So not quite as good as a few of the other cables that we've looked at. When we plug this into the iPad and charge the iPad, we get up to that almost 15 volts and we get that 2.5 amps, which of course is that fast charging that we get with the iPad. And so the cable that comes with the iPhone 15 Pro Max is a decent cable. It's very lightweight, it's thin, it has a nice braided finish to it, but overall, I would say this cable could be a little bit better. But then we move over to this Anchor Series 3 cable, which will plug into the iPhone. And you can see we pretty much get an even 5 volts here, which might be just a little bit more as far as voltage goes. And we get that 1.2, 1.3. I guess about the same as what we're getting. We're getting just a little bit more voltage, about the same amount of amps that are transferring through. Overall, a decent cable, maybe a little bit more durable than the cable that comes with the iPhone. You might sacrifice a little bit of flexibility. This cable's not quite as flexible as the one that comes with the iPhone. But I would say due to the way that this is manufactured here, this is going to hold up and be a little bit stronger than what you would get out of the cable that comes with your iPhone. Jumping back to our cable from Namask or Namasco, this is the only cable that we really saw a substantial increase in our amperage. Now we are up close to 1.5, 1.4, jumping up to 1.5, even 1.6 sometimes. And so if you're looking for max power transfer, I feel like this is one of the cables that you can go with that uh, is going to produce that. However, this is not a truly scientific test. We are running out of a device that supposedly puts out 100 watts through a cable that can support up to 240 watts through a little device that has given me a little bit of trouble today, but is definitely giving me outputs through the cable and letting me know what kind of power draw is coming from the device. And so overall, I'd have to say most of the cables that we've looked at are pretty darn close, with a few of them being subpar when it comes to charging higher end devices that can draw more power like the iPad. And I feel like there is something to say for thin cables as opposed to cables that are a bit thicker. Thicker cables are gonna have thicker wiring on the inside that's gonna be able to handle more. You definitely don't see this being a thin cable and saying that it'll support 240 watts. You're not gonna get 240 watts going through this cable, or at least you shouldn't. It's gonna support less, and that's going to be the resisting factor of that power transferring through the cable. It is a resistance issue. It's not whether the cable has a chip in it or something and it limits anything. It's actually the resistance of the wire itself. And so a bigger cable is usually going to perform a bit better. And the reason for this video is just to show that not all cables are created equally. There are going to be minor differences between some of these cables. While we can definitely charge an iPhone or an iPad with the cable that came with our iPhone, iPhone 15s, this is not a cable that I'm going to trust charging my laptop at over 100 watts or another device that can support charging over 100 watts. I would definitely go with a cable that's rated a bit higher. So if you're wanting an all-in-one cable that's going to have good transfer rates, good power transfer, this OWC cable is going to definitely support you, but it's not a super long cable. If you want a longer cable that's going to still support good charging, this JS Aux cable was definitely a good option. And if you're wanting a cable that is longer and durable as well, I'd say the Namasco cable is a great option for durability and power transfer. So check out the links in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel here so you can be notified about the video that tests these cables for data transfer. Because while they may charge well, can they transfer data quickly? Make sure to check out that video next. We'll see you there.